Today is Friday, April 20th, 2018, and my name is Scott Henshaw. I am in the Hodges Reading Room of Jackson Library with current international student Purvi Songvi to conduct an oral history interview for the UNCG Institutional Memory Collection. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How did I do with your name? I'm sorry? How did I do with your name? Oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd like to start the interview by asking you about your background, and can you tell me when and where you were born? I was born in uh, Bombay, India. On Do I have to give my date? You don't have to. <laughs> um, I was born in Bombay in India. Yeah. Okay. And can you tell me about your family and your home life and what your parents um, do? My, my parents, are, my mother is a housewife, my father is a retired businessman. I have two elder uh, sisters and a younger brother. Okay. And can you tell me about your education before college? Mm, I did my graduation in Bachelors of Commerce. Okay. Uh, then I did uh, a diploma in business management. And then I was doing pottery, ceramics. Okay. I went to England. I did these, you know, uh, small workshops and went with uh, famous potters to England and some pottery there, came back. I went to uh, to do some studio, some workshops uh, with the Indian potter as well in Himachal Pradesh of in India. Came back and started my own pottery at home in, wow. in my garage. And uh, I used to make some functional wear and then I moved on to beaded stuff, beaded uh, jewelry. Had exhibitions, I also had an exhibition once in um, Japan. Wow. Uh, and um, I then, then uh, after a few years, I had uh, gone. That is two thousand seven. I went uh, to London to do the masters of uh, uh, to do a masters in jewelry design. It was a one year masters. Came back, tried to do you know make contemporary jewelry, mm -hmm. uh, non traditional jewelry, not traditional at all. So, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work commercially, I, 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 you mean? Yeah, yeah it didn't work commercially. I was not satisfied. It was difficult to sell because it was so different from what the Indians wanted. It was just difficult, and I think I'm not a good uh, marketing person. Okay, that's very interesting. Did, so you, did you have somebody in your family that did? Um, jewelry? So, yeah, how no. did you get interested in that? Because I, mean. um, I thought that because I loved pottery and I, I, I did a lot of small handwork, mm -hmm. I thought it would be good to get into jewelry, which I thought was uh, more, um, you know, I, more money. Yeah, it's more marketable maybe? More marketable, more money making yeah. business. Okay, it's interesting. Uh, I want to go go back a little bit and yeah. ask you about learning English. A lot of people think it's a very hard uh, language to learn. Um, you learned English while you were in India, is that yes, correct? Yes, yes. I, I did my education in English from my nursery till till until now. It's been in, in English. Okay. Wow. And so, let's. When did you first visit the U.S.? Uh, I think it was in 1998, maybe. And what was that first? Because I was, I was rejected two times or one time, my visa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I was a single female, mm -hmm. so I was rejected visas, but then finally I got it, I came here, and I, I was visiting a friend. I came for, as a holiday. Okay. Yeah. Right. And what was that first experience like? Uh, did it match your expectations of what America was supposed to be like? I loved it. At that point, I, I was quite comfortable. I loved it because of the openness, the, you know, nobody's bothering you, nobody's sitting on your head. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> oh, compared to India, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, I, not, I I've not been there, but it's <laughs> supposed to be crowded, and it is, right? Yeah. Okay. Not just crowded, but just, you know, you have your own space at least, yeah. Okay. I, I can, it's easier to think, yeah, because mm. uh, in India, everybody is just like, like there in front of you. <laughs> okay. It, was there anything that surprised you about America? Um, when I came here first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, because I'd seen so many movies as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the movies, huh? It was not just like <laughs> the movies, but uh, at the same time, uh, I wasn't so surprised. Okay. But it's surprising now. Okay. 
So why because was at that? that time I was a tourist. I was here for two months, three months, living with uh, uh, friends or family. They were there to take care of, you know, small things. You, the, the mindset is different. But when you come as a student or when you come alone and you're living alone, mm -hmm. it's a different thing because I have to take care of the car, I have to take care of the apartment, I have to take care of myself, I have to do my studies, I have to do... Sure. You, are the, you are the only person you have to take care of. Right. So that that is... Um, and I, I didn't know that I would be able to do this, actually. Mm -hmm. But you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I know, I know you were a world traveler, traveler before you got here, but what do you think of American food and how does it compare to food back home? I don't eat American food. Oh, okay, interesting. I'm a vegetarian, okay. first of all. Um, and um, French fries is my, like, I, I still love French fries. Okay. But after hearing all the, you know, the stuff which goes into the food and all, I, um, I try to, you know, stay away, mm -hmm. but it's too tempting. So do you, uh, we do have some international markets, grocery stores in yeah, Greensboro, yeah, do, you, yeah. do you use those? Or do I, you I go to Gmart, yeah. I, I, Gmart some, once in a while, but uh, Harris Teeter and, um, which is the other one at uh, Friendly Center, the uh, Whole, Whole Foods. Foods. Whole Foods, yeah. Yeah, they, those are my favorite. Yeah. Okay. And, and my Indian grocery, yes. Indian oh. grocery store, which is very near my house, that is my basic staple. Yeah, there are some, yeah, some yeah, yeah, yeah. There are quite yeah. The, you get everything, but at the same time, you don't get what what you're used to in India. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, because, you know, in some places in North Carolina, you, I don't think you would have those options. I don't know how much you've traveled around North Carolina. Hardly, hardly, yeah, hardly. Yeah. I've, so. I've got just gone to Charlotte, yeah. and I'm here, and actually I don't want to go out much. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And um, I, I just, I miss my food. I miss the food. That is the only thing I miss of India. Wow. Are there any uh, Indian restaurants that you actually like? That you, so no. I'm asking you, what are the authentic ones? No. Are there any? There are. There supposed to supposedly there are the Raleigh and Vincent Salem. I haven't been to, but I think the restaurants are bad over here. They have the same taste for all kinds of food. Right, and of course, there's vast differences in Indian food, right? Yes, Regional yes, 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 because. Yeah. What Americans are used to is probably more the richer and the more uh, North Indian food. Mm -hmm. What I have, what I cook at home is very different. It's very light. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that kind of food and it just makes me, it's like comfort food. It makes sure. me feel good. Yeah, that's what you grew up with. You know? Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. All right. So when did you first consider coming to the U.S. to further your education? Um, it was in probably uh, April or May of March, April of May of 2015. Okay. That is the first time I, I thought that, you know, I need to move on now. Okay. I need to do something to go ahead in life mm -hmm. because I couldn't see myself just doing what I was, going, was doing at that point. I was a bit stagnant, I thought. Okay. I was not growing. Yeah, looking for a fresh start. And, yeah. Yes. Okay. It was difficult. It was an extremely difficult decision. Sure. Because at this age, I know of very few people, men or women, from India going and, you know, studying. Uh, forget in India, but not even, you know, outside the country. That was a big thing. Right. But um, I had to take it because it was not possible to stay there. Right. And... Um, I just did my research online, mm -hmm. thought art history was my, you know, the go-to subject kind of thing because I had my art background, a bit of art background, I was interested in it. Um, I applied as a art for art history. I applied for art history in most of the colleges here. Mm -hmm. Actually, I can't say most of the colleges because I hardly applied to two or three colleges. Okay. And I had... <laughs> When I applied, I had these specific specifications I had. That Things you were looking for. Yes. Right. The first thing was I didn't want to go in a big city. So okay. the West Coast, I was not interested. Right. I didn't want to go to a cold place. Right. <laughs> so these two people, the, these, sorry, these two, these two regions, these two things, um, 
I, I had to come down to a place. I had to find a place where I would, you know, the the temperature was good. It had good universities and it had um, good teachers. That was very important. And so I applied. I applied. I've researched some stuff online, and I had to go as a senior student or a you adult, know, student. adult student. Mm -hmm. So that was a different, different way of different researching. Application. Different yeah. application, different way of research. So when I did, I just went online, found out, found out a few colleges. First, I was going to go into you know maybe do some art stuff like you know uh, maybe so other than art history, something to do with the fine arts or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. But then I, I I didn't think it was a right decision. I changed my mind. I I emailed quite few five or seven colleges all around the US and I think the UNCG international programs were the first people who gave me a very positive reply right. and very quick yeah and I was looking to do it quick because I didn't want to wait for another year right if you miss the deadlines you have to lose a whole yeah, year and yeah and because the visas and you know the, the, all, right. the, all these things take planning right. and here you don't feel like that, but in India everything seems very, it's, it's a different, uh, America is, you know, uh -huh. different place, right? right? Right. It's like America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, and in India you feel that, oh, you're in America, you know, it's, it's a different, it's different. People, people look at you in a different way. Okay. You know, yeah. so uh, that time I had to had to make a lot of difficult decisions at that point. And yeah, that's a big step. Yeah, it was a big step. I had to ask my parents for money, which were, they were not very eager to give initially. Right. They were like, you know, you've done it. Like, how much are you going to study now? <laughs> you're right. Like, you know, exactly. what are you going to do? Like, yeah. you are just going to go on like this forever. I was like, you know, I need it or I'll have to pick up. For, I'll have to take some money from my savings. I have to do something. You know, right. there's no way out. Uh, yes, they then obviously they uh, sponsored my whole education, and uh, then I had also applied for UNC Charlotte, mm -hmm. but they were not very quick in reply, and they were very formal, and and I got very good. Mm. I, I I I don't know why, but I got a very good response from uh, the undergraduate uh, undergraduate international programs here, and right. I was. I was like, you know, this is it. I'm just going to apply. I'm go I sent all my papers. I sent, and it is a long process, in from India because you have to go back to your uh, your college time. That was mine. Was like twenty, almost twenty five years back. Mm -hmm. So I had to get my certificates attested, and because you have to send these attested certificates and government stuff and very slow and right, yeah. you, you know ev you have to if you want it quickly you have to like you know go and plead with them it's difficult because okay. they have so many applications like me right who in students who want to go abroad right so they all are doing the same thing at that time and the deadline is coming so you have to do it quickly right so it it was <laughs> it was like, stressful yeah it was very <laughs> stressful <laughs> So I did that and then um, got response, did my visas, got it. I was not even sure that I would get my visas because mm -hmm. they could easily ask me, you know, why do you want to, at this age, why do you want to study? Mm -hmm. You know, why do you want to even go abroad to study? Right. And because at that time there were a lot of problems. It was not easy and it's still not easy for students to come here like that. You have mm. to be... You know, I, I don't know what, but I just got them. Yeah, do you have to write some kind of justifications for your... No, no, but okay. I had to go for an interview. Okay. You all have to go. It's not just, you know, paperwork. Right. You go there, you sit there, they call you, they look at you, because, you know, it's it's stressful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very stressful. Yeah, there's because a lot writing on that. Yeah, right? and, yeah. and it's like an inter interrogation kind of window there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, scary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So can you tell me about your first impressions of UNCG? Um, you obviously had a good impression of them because they contacted you fairly quickly yes, and they were yes, nice, yes. they weren't as formal. My, my first impression of UNCG would be the 
the response I got from them. And when I had emailed Jennifer of the international programs and I said, you know, how do I reach there? Like, because Greensboro is not on the the normal airline. Uh, you know, oh, right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you know, there, there's not a larger. We have an airport, but yes, it's not you going yes. to fly directly from India. Yes, to so it's, 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 it's difficult yeah. it's to get, get flights. So when I had to ask the travel agent in India, so I was like, can you do something Bombay to Greensboro? I was like, where is Greensboro? <laughs> yeah. So she had to actually look and think, and then she connected me to a flight, which was Bombay, New York, and New York to Greensboro. Okay. And uh, Jennifer had told me that, I'll, Purvi, I can come come and pick you up personally if you're coming to Greensboro. Yeah. And I, ha I had another option of going to Charlotte, which my relative had asked me to do, but I wasn't, I wasn't too eager because it would take me one and a half hour, and it would be just too stressful to go through right. because I was coming in like middle of the, not middle of the night, but late evening, late night. It was, co it was going to be cold, December 2015. Yeah. So I was very happy when Jennifer came and she picked me up. Yeah. She dropped me off the apartment. I had to do my apartment f online as well. Right. Because I didn't have a place to stay here. Right. And I had to do everything online. And uh, a re relative actually went and saw the apartment in uh, downtown Greensboro at that point. Um, I said, yeah, what can uh, I do? So it was fortunate that you had people in your family already in North Carolina that could help you out a little bit. Uh, yes, it's starting, yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know how much you saw online maybe about what USCG looked like or the area mm -hmm. looked like, or did, but do you have, did you have any impression or any expectation before you got here of what I it would look like or what it, Greensboro would be like? or? I knew that it was a small place. I knew that that was going to be a small place, which I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I wanted open spaces. Um, when I applied for my uh, artistry year, I was not um, looking at the place as such, the campus sure. as such. Yeah. I was looking at how the, hist the art history department uh, was going to be teaching as in because it's stress it's stress that they are more visual based mm -hmm. you know and I was looking for that okay I, I wanted something because I'm, I'm a visual person then you know right uh, yeah it makes sense for art yeah, yeah. So, but so it also makes sense to look for a school based on the merits of the teaching yes, or, yes yeah, definitely so yeah, yeah so I I was like you know they seem good everything seems good and what can happen right it's America. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> like you know. What can happen at the uh -huh. at the most? If I don't like it, I can go back home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, I just took the chance, and I just and I, but from the first semester, I was happy. So that's great. I didn't, I didn't have right. any problems. So you came in as an art history art, art, history, art history. Yes, and but now you've since changed to history. History major. Can you talk a little bit about that change and what brought that about and? Um, when I came here, it was, first of all, it was cold. I had like, I had not registered for my classes before. So, you know, when you come here, you, you're going through the process of uh, uh, the registration and um, advising and things like that and orientation, it's, like, it's, it's different. And um, you go for the classes and those were the options available. And for art history, we had to do a, you know, a drawing foundation course, and there were other options as well. And the advisor at that point, who was, uh, I don't remember his name, but he, he said that, you know, you can do this, you have to take a language. Um, so I had taken the basic German language, I had done, um, I had taken history, art history foundation course, or art history, uh, like art history course. And, um, I, I was supposed to take four. To, to be eligible, we have to have four classes. To be eligible as an international student, full-time mm -hmm. international student, you have to have four classes. Right. So one was left, and uh, I said, you know, that's. he said, you know, are you interested in history? I said, I, yeah, yeah, I'll do history. So he, 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 he told me a few, na a few things which were, you know, topics were there, and it's a very new thing for me because we never had at least in India, I don't remember studying history as per country-wise or, you know, history after World War II 
of mm -hmm. you know 1945 and present right world history like not 95 so it, it was very interesting and i said no no i'll, I'll do the uh, 1945 to present because i i'm interested in the world war and i can relate to it i like the world war ii and the, you know after that because it was also the independence mm -hmm. india's independence and you you sort of uh, you're used to it I, I can go back until that time right. so i took that course and um, you know, 30, 35 students, all very much young, going in the class. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was odd. At like in the few classes, you don't know whom to talk to. The students are you, they see that you are a different. You know, you are different. You are different in the class. Mm -hmm. should like you know, looking wise, and um, they don't talk to you initially mm -hmm. some of them are friendly some of them are friendly they'll at least acknowledge you but some students don't even acknowledge you wow. right yeah. they will just look through you yeah. even if they even even if you meet them on the street but some are nice they are, it's, yeah. they're, 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 there's a mix right. you know so um, but my my goal was to study here mm -hmm. so I I didn't care uh, what other students did I was very concerned that I have to do well and I had, um, I, I, I was just like, you know, studying is what I'm here for. That is what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to enjoy my life right now. Mm -hmm. So I did, uh, I took that course. It was very interesting. I don't know why, but probably the teachers are so fantastic here. Mm, good. You know, I, I, I personally think the teachers are amazing. Good. The, the kind mm. of, the kind of education which is here is very different from what I remember 20 years back in India. Right. I had never cared about education. I never cared about the teachers in India. Mm -hmm. and I hardly used to go to college. I used to just go and give my exams <laughs> end of the year, yeah. take tuitions and get through. Yeah. You know, it, that was not important. But the, the topics which were being taught here was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, I, it was, and it was during the same time I think uh, I thought I would, uh, you know, I, 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 st I had started thinking at that point that is this the right decision that I'm, should I be changing to another, instead of art history, should I go to, go to um, history, you know, mm -hmm. because it was so interesting and there was so much to learn, there was mm -hmm. so much to learn. And um, I had started inquiring in the first semester itself with Dr. Bolton that, you know, wow. what, what are the requirements? How do you go about it? Because this is what I want to do. I want to do, I want to do the PhD. I don't know why, but I, I thought this is what I want to do. Okay. You know, so I um, inquired and then I changed my major only in my second semester. Yeah, but still very you quick. Know? Yeah. yeah, it was very quick. I, I, I was surprised myself that <laughs> um, it sort of just interested me a lot. Uh -huh. You know, and it was, it, it's been taught in a very uh, open, open way, you know, it's, it's very, uh, I, I don't know how to use, I don't know how, what word to use because it's not, bi it th doesn't seem biased. Okay. The teacher will tell you, you know, this is what happened, this is what US did, this is what India did, this is what other country did. Right. But they're not going to say that, you know, that the U.S. has always been right, right yeah, or India has always been right. Be. You know, yeah. it, it yeah. should. Be. So that is what I really liked about it as well. Mm -hmm. And I could see that um, all countries were affected. All the, the world over, it, all countries were affected by the World War II. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was interesting, the culture, the kind of, you know, uh, the politics which was involved it was interesting mm -hmm. so second semester i changed to history completely mm -hmm. and uh, that's it yeah um sounds like they really struck a chord with you the, the professors yes and, and the yes, courses yes, yes, in the history yes, department yeah, particularly yeah. yeah history department yeah. yeah did you have any favorite professors or classes or do you now i still have them yeah <laughs> um I would still, Dr. Bolton is now, um, I think he's now he's the associate dean now mm -hmm. of arts and sciences. I'm not sure, so he doesn't teach, but I had taken another class with him. Mm -hmm. 
391, the research thing. That was also very nice. And um, Dr. Villela, mm -hmm. whom I, uh, I, I took the history of um, Brazil with, okay. uh, world history. And Dr. Bender, uh, I am, I'm doing my honors with her and I have taken British history with, him, with her as well. Right. And they have been extreme. And I'm taking also history of Mexico with Dr. Villela right now. Wow. So, I I, I like um, I like their way of teaching, and they're very inspiring, extremely smart, yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing. Now, I wonder. You've talked a little bit about how you weren't as interested in <laughs> <laughs> your studies the first time around yeah, in yeah. India. Uh, do you think that has more to do with the fact that you were younger, you're a different person now? Yes, yes, yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. Because I still I see the students here, right, who are, who were, who are my, who were my, when I was studying, I was their age, right, right in India, and I see them, I see them. Some of them are serious, but but they just want to graduate. They just want to finish everything and just <laughs> you know get on with the jobs kind of thing. Right. It's like uh, it, that is the impression I've got of of a lot of them okay. um, but and I was like that I was mm. probably worse than them I don't know but uh, now it's different now it's different because you have because I've traveled before also because I read a lot of you know different cultures different people different histories why they are like this now mm -hmm. why the politics is different than the Indian politics or even American politics or wherever. Why are they so different? Mm -hmm. So um, I think um, that has that has put me in that mindset now that I'm much more serious about my studies now. Right. Yeah. Now I also wonder if um, you, you're talking about your interactions with other students yes. here uh, in that two, 212 class, which is kind of uh, like a sophomore class. Most, so of the, you, most of the students even now are like this, uh -huh. but okay, that was my like first that. class, as in right. my first uh, history class. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I wonder how much of that, their interaction or non-interaction with you has, do you think any of that is because you're also an adult student? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't it, affect so me now. Okay. It doesn't yeah. affect me now at all. Yeah. And I don't think it's a big deal. I should not... Uh, spend time because they are right in their way right because mm. they are much younger they think in a different way they have to party they have to right. you know priorities are different priorities are yeah. different mine is yeah. very different mine is very different yeah. i don't have a social life as such and the only thing i do is study uh, and uh, i cook a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I cook a lot and i love cooking and i love food and that is my my like de-stress time sure. So that is what I do, and and I enjoy it completely. Yeah. And then their priorities are different. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As were yours. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. You were, yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit? You've, and you've already talked about this some, but what has UNCG done to help foreign students achieve their goals here? Hmm. I think uh, they have supported us. Uh, Jennifer is like the first person, like a one. Uh, contact person they've been very you can know you, can you give us Jennifer's last name so we give her Jennifer credit? do you remember uh, Kelly okay she's the undergrad uh, head okay uh, admission admission head somebody something like that yeah. so um, is this in mm, the international program center yes 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 okay. at, the sure building, building, at the Faust building yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so um, she, uh, she and Greta is there Norma is there but Greta is there as well and they if there is a problem, you can. Uh, I have gone to them. You know, not even a problem actually. If I, if yes, I had a problem once that I had to drop off one, one uh, class, uh, in my was it the second or the third semester. Second semester, I had to drop uh, one class because I just couldn't mm -hmm. do it. Sure. I just couldn't do it. And as an international student, you are required to have four. Mm -hmm. So I had to drop off one. So now it was only three. Right. So you had to pick up. So I had to do a lot of. I had to go to the counseling center. I had to do a lot of stuff, you know, and get it all together and give her the paper so that she could change my F one, or I would not be eligible to being as a F one student. But that was available, or that I could do that only once. Mm -hmm. And oh, wow. but they were very good. Yeah. So they did it for me. 
and had to change my F1 visa and all that. And um, whenever we travel to India, we have to get signatures. Mm -hmm. And they remind us, you know, that you register for your classes. They are, they are on top of you. Yeah, in a good way? Sometimes irritating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's just too much, you know. Sure. It's not actually them. It's the kind of uh, the legal stuff that sure. they have to follow. So I can't blame them. You right. know, they have to also because there are so many students. They have to, you know, see to it that everybody's right, and know, everybody not may not be as, as yeah up on top of things as you are. So yes, yes. What might be a little more annoying yes, for you might so be more necessary for a younger yes, student. Yes, it's like yes, yes. Thinking of other things. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, that I think that is that is true because some students may you know they just ignore the emails. I look at every email and I, right. I, I at least browse through it and I understand you know if I ha if I'm required to do something because I don't want to get into any problems legal sure. problems here. Yeah, and I don't want them to you know blame that you know Purvi has not done that mm -hmm. because that's not right. Right. Uh, is there any particular um, project or research you've done at UNCG of which you're particularly proud? The research that I'm doing right now, my honors project, uh -huh. I'm, I'm quite proud of it. It's difficult, but I'm also proud of it. It's uh, about the the diplomacy of uh, India's partition mm -hmm. and um, some things which I have found out through the newspaper articles, which which are quite surprising or shocking for me. Okay, and know. tell us what time period you're, you're studying? Mm, that is um, nine, 19... Actually, I, I can say it is mm, the Second World War. Okay. Second World War till, my, till 1947. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you're, you're some of your primary source material is newspapers? Most, most of my... Uh, m not most, all of my sources have to be primary sources because I'm looking at the negotiations which were reported in the foreign newspapers mm -hmm. and a few in the Indian newspapers. The same thing how it was reported in the Indian newspaper, how it was also reported in the um, foreign newspapers. Mm -hmm. So that is mainly two countries, that is UK and um, the British okay. and the American newspaper, New York Times and London Times. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about that? As far or not, as not, we can cut out whatever you need to. Yeah. But if you want to talk about someone, that's fine. Uh, I think um, this research has um, I had it. It was a hard research because it was very. I think it it had come too close to home, kind of thing. Sure. And um, the kind of notions that we had about. Chinna or even Gandhi or Bose or Ambedkar or all those leaders, Nehru, um, is um, they have been they have been almost smashed by these by this uh, by this research now, and right. I, I look at it a very different way. Sometimes I feel that I've, I've become too pessimistic about it. Uh -huh. Right. And you know maybe I'm too negative about this whole thing, and uh, because what we were taught or what impression we had about Pakistan or you know other countries, other other political leaders is is not true. I think. Right. So your research has led you to different conclusions than you learned. It, there was a lot of self-reflection in that yeah. because I come from a family where from my, my maternal grandfather was a Gandhian so he used to wear the dhoti and the topi and you know and he and I was I myself have read these Gandhi books when I was 18 and 20 and I was like you know I used to wear khadi clothes and you know people used to just make fun of me at that point and I still uh, believe the things which were taught in our house, taught in our family, you know, the honesty and, you know, things like that, having vegetarian food and all the ideas which Gandhi had. Um, I've lived my life like that until now. Mm -hmm. But when you look back and when you research and you find out not such good things about that person, you have to, 
you know think about it rethink this whole thing that is it a good thing bad thing do you want to still you know have that kind of a uh, thinking mm -hmm. so it's it's been hard it's been very hard right that first few months it was very hard yeah a yeah. very illuminating research i'm sorry very illuminating enlightening uh, research for sure yes because i think i've become very vocal and very angry <laughs> <laughs> after well, that's this, okay. yeah. you know, and yeah. uh, now I'm able to tell my friends or family that you know, don't think that everything is good. Right. You know that they were not always what. N yeah, they, not they everybody is saints. No. Or yeah, they're not. They have not. They were not what they were. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's true. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the culture here at UNCG. Yes. Um, are there any so social or academic events that stand out in your mind uh, that have happened while you've been here? Anything mm. you do departmentally, history department or the International Program Center? Or oh, I love the giving away of the t-shirts during the advising <laughs> in okay. the history department. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I, I was like, you know, I want one t-shirt of the history department. Oh yeah, that is cool. So, uh, other than that, I'm... Um, Yes, I had a very nice, uh, Dr. Bender had given a very nice talk from, um, in the Honors College. She had given a talk about uh, the Irish women, Irish women being sent to Africa uh, to get married to or to, to get married to the German Legion. It, it was a very interesting topic what she had researched about. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think it was it, it was a good one, good event that I had gone to. And uh, the recent one was the the honors back banquet, which was two days back. Nice. Three days back. Yeah. Can I ask you a little more about the honors college? Is it so? Uh, yeah. Obviously, not all international students are in the, go into the honors college. Can you tell you a little bit about how that came about? <laughs> I I think I did, did very well in my first semester. Okay. And I was getting some. I I, I didn't take it seriously. I was like, yeah, I got a three point nine GPA. You know, I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, it's fine. And I was in the chancellor's list and the dean's list, and I thought everybody did that. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> so. Uh, in the second semester, I think I had started getting some emails about, you know, come being a part of the Honors College, and I, d I don't think I took it seriously. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, what is this, you know? What are we supposed to do in all these things? I think it was the second semester. And because I've only had a GPA and two, I had a GPA of 3.93 until last semester. Then I, it has gone down a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was doing very well and it was I don't know somebody said or I don't know what it was because I had I, ha I had thought of going by that time to going to graduate school mm -hmm. so I took some uh, advice from Dr. Bolton so you know what are we supposed to do over here and he said you know it will be a good thing so sh he was very surprised that you have, you've got into the honors mm -hmm. I was like yeah you know <laughs> so I said, so what are we supposed to do? It's like, you know, you should do it kind of thing. It's extra work. You have to do some papers right. and right. you have to do it. So, but Dr. Bolton was not able to take, uh, that was on the third semester, I think. Dr. Bolton was not able, I, I couldn't work with him because um, he was not going to teach after that semester. Right. So uh, I, I had approached Dr. Villela that, you know, this is the thing and I want to do what are we supposed to do? So he said, oh, you're supposed to read some books and write a paper and, you know, I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you, do you think I can do it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you can do it, you know, if you can. And uh, and I also asked him, I also asked him, do you think it will make a difference? You know, like, what's a big deal about it? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, it will be, it'll be a very good thing if you have an honor certificate when you're applying for a grad school. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, then I have to do it. Okay. So I did uh, a paper with him. Uh, it was about films and uh, Brazilian films. Mm, okay. And 
uh, give, did that. And then the next semester I had to do um, then next semester I did it with Dr. Bender. I did on uh, the Jallianwala Bagh. Though I was doing doing British history with her, but I wanted to work with her as well. So I did Jallianwala Bagh. And along with that, I started the seniors project mm -hmm. in that same semester. I think I had started my seniors project. Uh, with. Um, I started out with the Calcutta riots, mm -hmm. with research. The paper was done, everything. But in the next semester, when we then, that is this semester, when the time came to write, I was going in a different. So she's like, you know, this is not. Right. And but she was very. She's like, you know, it, that happens. It does. Yeah. So just to what what you're interested in, and uh, we started with the negotiations, and then we had to break it down. Like you know, can't write everything. It's a thirty-page page paper. So right. we had to pick up, and we had to do a lot of research and to go through the newspapers and that is the time I realized all these right. new things which were coming up. <laughs> Shocking details. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Let's see where I'm at here. Um, can you tell me about your fellow students? And I realize you're an adult student so um, that might be a little bit different. But what type of student from your view attends UNCG? I think they are extremely smart. I personally think they are extremely smart. It's just that they are not probably interested in their studies, <laughs> but they are very smart. They yeah. are obviously, it's a different generation, mm -hmm. and I know that the young younger generation is much smarter than us, but uh, they are smart. They are able to handle a lot of things in their life. Mm -hmm. They work and they study. I don't right. work. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't study and work together. It's right. very difficult for me. Right. But I think the American student is used to it. They've been brought up that way. Right. And they, they have to do it. Yeah. yeah. And not everybody comes from, um, you know, I don't know if it's a North Carolina uh, or if it's just UNCG, but not everybody comes with lot with, uh, with, with financial support. Right, it's true. You know, so uh, they, I think they do great in a way. Mm -hmm. because they're able to do so much in their life. They, they do struggle a lot. Mm -hmm. I can see them. Course, yeah. They work very hard. That's part of the college experience, is it? Not? Yeah, yeah. I, I, but yeah. it wasn't so bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a very nice uh, yeah. experience in that sense. Not There was no pressure of money as such. Right. There are, because I've come across students where, th where they have not had, um, they've called up and said that, you know, but we do have food. Mm -hmm. That is a that is very shocking for me. Mm -hmm. Very shocking because uh, in India I would uh, we never had a problem of food, and I don't think any any Indian s sitting in India would believe that students here don't have food. Right. They're coming from different you know a different family background. Some of the, the parents are split. They have their own problems. You know, it, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, and I think they are doing, in that sense, they are doing great. All right. Yeah? Yeah. So you've had different educational experiences yeah. uh, in the U.S., in Great Britain, and in India. Can you talk a little bit about differences in education in those countries that you've experienced? Mm -hmm. In India, it was it was very different. Probably because I was at a different age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was different. You know, I was young. I didn't care. But I also think that uh, the, st the classes were very large. Here, you have like a 30, 35. Well, sometimes bigger. Like the art history is like you know sometimes bigger classes. Uh, but the the teachers are very interested here, or they, they at least they seem to be very in touch with the students, you mm -hmm. know. It's not that they don't care, right? And, and sorry? I was going to ask you, how uh, do you have, can you give us some kind of idea of how big the classes were in, in India as an undergraduate? What's a typical? Uh, I don't remember much, but they were definitely more than 60, 
70 yeah. students. Yeah, and in some schools here in the U.S., you'll have larger class sizes, depending, you know, there are oh, different okay. ratios. That's yeah. one of the things when you look at different colleges, you can look at the student to faculty ratio, and oh, you can see, yeah. you can kind of tell I what the average be. class size is. Yeah. I so think, it I, was does vary, I, think yeah. I was very lucky over here. Yeah. 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 Because they, uh, it was like that, and um, I, I used to, you know, the attendance, the participation, all that, which is so important in, in, in all our classes here, is not so much over there. Hmm. You know, in, you study in a different way, they teach in a different way. You know, you just want to do your classes and leave. That was my my thing. I never cared. Right. So I guess they uh, mainly relied on end of course testing or. Uh, yes. Like, so you, yeah. Yeah. Midterm know. probably or one exam or just end of course. And that was end, the end majority of, of your yeah, grade. Yeah. yeah. And and also, we didn't have such comfortable. Now they have a lot of good colleges there now. You mm -hmm. know, with proper air conditioning, proper clean table and desks. That time it was not like that. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it was hot. It used to be like <laughs> cribbing about you know things. It was dirty sometimes, mm -hmm. not clean. This is this is different. Right. This is different. You know, you mm -hmm. feel that you are going. F you are in a comfortable space, and you are able to concentrate on your teachers over here. It was different over there. Mm -hmm. But now, now it is as I said. Now the now they are as good as international uh, sure. schools now over sure. there as well. Yeah. So, how do you maintain contact and relationships with your family and friends in India? It's uh, WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Facebook. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and obviously uh, once a week, um, I talk to my mom and my dad. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm so sure they appreciate that. Yeah, so yeah. that is um, because if I don't, th my mother gets very upset about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So she, w that's why I try and do you know at least uh, once a week, and I say, it. or so if I don't call, she's going to call me. Right. Right. You know, so, you might as well do so it. I do that. And <laughs> friends and all, it's always on, you know, WhatsApp or whatever. My friends, sometimes we are on chat, like a group. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, you know, individually, my friend calls me up like every one, once or twice a week and she'll just check on me mm -hmm. like if you're doing fine. Right. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. So now what are your plans after graduating from UNCG? Do you hope to stay in the U.S.? And um, I've got into the graduate school, the history graduate Very good. school. Congratulations. So, thank you. So I'm looking forward to that yeah. for, the, for the next two years. Yeah. Then I don't know. I'm, I, I plan to apply for the PhD, but I don't know what's going to happen. Sure. You know, if, because it's not easy to get into uh, PhDs. Sure. Yeah. 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 So you're thinking maybe of a career in academics maybe after that if you're going for a PhD or see what happens? Yeah, let's see. Okay. <laughs> I have no, I don't want to make any plans because sometimes plans don't work sure. out. I just do. I enjoy, I just do it. Sure. Okay. Uh, can, um, we're going to go to the conclusions yeah. section of yeah. our interview now. Uh, can you tell me how UNCG has affected your life and what it means to you? Mm, the UNCG campus, the UNCG teachers, the the UNCG international programs, the UNCG staff, everyone has, um, mm, they have changed my way of thinking, hmm. you know, and um, kind people, very helpful, and I feel at home. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. as such, and also because of my age, I don't care sometimes. But you know, I and I go as per, and they are, they are they're very open. They're very open to um, different thi different thoughts, different ideas, mm -hmm. sure. and I love that. Yeah, it's great. So you feel you feel accepted. That's good. You know. To, and, and in a different country, to feel accepted is like a very big thing. Yeah, you certainly. Know? So UNCG has done that for me. And I, I personally, I would want to do my PhD here if I could. But they say I'm not supposed to do your, you're yeah, not you know, supposed to do yeah. your graduate and your master's and everything at one college, sure. you know. 
that is the only reason I would leave or I would be at USCG for a longer time. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's yeah. a good, yeah. good statement to how yeah. they've done. Well, we're doing these interviews as part of the 125th anniversary of the university, and that's an excellent opportunity for reflection. Yeah. But it also helps us think about where we're heading in the future. Yes. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the future of UNCG, and where do you see it going in the next 25 or 30 years? Um, I'm seeing the difference already, actually, from the time I came, probably just in the last two years. I'm seeing the shuffling of the, um, the staff, the teachers, the kind of uh, classes which are being offered, the kind of um, um, accommodations which are given to the um, students. Um, lot of help has been given I think and I think it's it's amazing mm -hmm. and I think it's it's if it goes on like this it is going to do much better mm -hmm. much better than even now okay. and I, I feel it's uh, I can't say you know that I have seen a lot of colleges also because I'm not but I feel this is uh, this is very good mm -hmm. you know so yeah, I, I think UNCG is is is, at the, is doing very well now, and it, and it's going to do very well if they go on like this. It's going to do much better in the future. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't have any more formal questions for you, but if there's anything else you want to talk about, this is your time to go back and touch on anything we've missed or expand on anything that you want to. Mm. There's nothing much. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. Thank you very much for taking uh, thank you time for to talk to us. Thank you for asking me to come and give this interview. I'm yeah. honored to do that for UNCG. Yeah, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.